back here on the show to continue talking about more stories, contract negotiations around the NFL, specifically now on Brandon Ayuk and how his situation is sort of developing right now as I speak. We've seen a lot of antics, a lot of stories, stuff like that, and hinting at where this could go. Ayuk tweeting at Mike Tomlin, getting all the Steelers fans excited for a potential trade. The Steelers are in the market for a wide receiver. The Instagram story he posted after John Lynch spoke on the contract negotiations very positively. But if you saw his story, you would think the opposite. And him calling out John Lynch in in that story, however you want to interpret it, there was that. And now Ayuk most recently went on the Nightcap Show podcast for, for Shannon Sharp and Chad Ochocinco. He was a guest on that show, and he went on there to talk about it. He is on the final year of his contract this year, 2024, and they asked him about it, what was going on with it, to which he said, I'm trying to get what I deserve. I feel like this season, this season playing football, I figured out who I was as a person and a player, what I bring to the table, what I bring to the locker room, what I bring to the organization. Very confidently said in the the show, if you didn't see it, I recommend go watching it. It's a very entertaining show. This episode spoke a lot of how Brandon Ayuk felt during his contract negotiations going on. And you do see the way he speaks of it, how you could agree with him. Because if you saw any of the 49ers games last year, how he developed and grew throughout the season, all 17 weeks, and even in the playoffs, you saw how impactful he was, not only because of the production, he led the 49ers with 75 receptions, he had a career high of over 1,300 yards, 17.9 yards per catch, another season high or career high for him, and he had seven touchdowns as well. He not only put up those numbers, which are very impressive for any receiver on any team, he would start on any team most likely, but he was pretty much healthy the whole season, and that's something I think a lot of people don't really value too, too highly. A lot of people just look at the the stats and the production and stuff like that. The consistency is important in these in these statistical categories of production, but health and being always there for the team, always having Brock Purdy look over and know what he's going to get out of Brandon Ayuk, that is just as important, I think, for any team, any successful team, and the 49ers have had that with Ayuk, which is why you always see them in NFC Championship games, always making the playoffs, always having really that number one or number two seed, just coming off of a Super Bowl. That's the kind of stuff you need out there. Not throwing shade on Debo or McCaffrey or George Kittle, but if you compare all of them with Brandon Ayuk, Brandon Ayuk's usually the one that's always out there compared to George Kittle, Debo, and McCaffrey, like I mentioned. All of them almost always pick up a knock here or there. It's not really too significant, but just comparing them to Ayuk, he's always out there, so that's a positive. On the final year of his deal, like I mentioned, he is set to make $14 million. And if you compare that to Debo or really any wide receiver in the league, um, the kind of receivers that put up the kind of numbers that Ayuk just did, Debo is set to make almost $24 million, which is the threshold right now for some of the best wide receivers, the, I would say, 24 to 28 range, 20 to 28 range, I would probably say, for those top 15, top 10 receivers that I think Ayuk falls into. You start getting above the 27s to 28s, that's when you get into top three, top five receivers in the NFL. Um, definitely, that's what Tyreek Hill makes, Devontae Adams makes, to name a few, Cooper Cup. I don't think Brandon Ayuk's there yet, but being paid $14 million next season isn't um, an indication of how much he brings to this team. So there's that. And I mentioned that because this financial salary cap issues with the 49ers and how this could really get a bit bigger now is because they've struck gold obviously with Brock Purdy and how low his contract situation is and how low his salary is really he will only be a one million dollar cap hit next season on his rookie deal on his rookie deal still 
And their CEO, Jed York, has already said, I talked about it last week, how they know what they have in Brock Purdy. They're excited to have him on their team. They know he's going to cost a lot, but that's a good problem to have, to have one of the top quarterbacks, young quarterbacks in the league. They're open to extending him. They don't seem hesitant to give him the sort of money that he might ask for, 40 over $40 million per year. We don't know. That's next season, but you kind of presume that's amount. That's the amount he'll want to ask for if he performs like he did last year. So you have a big contract coming up next season with Brock Purdy. Not to mention, as of right now, the 49ers are projected to be $24 million over the cap in 2025. So you have your quarterback. No one's arguing. If you have to make a de- decision, are you going to stick with a top quarterback or the one of the top wide receivers on your team? Most, if not all, people are going to stick with the quarterback. So if it does come down to next season trying to re-sign Brandon Ayuk when he'll be a free agent or giving Brock Purdy this big deal if he performs like he did this season, Brandon Ayuk is going to go regardless. So instead of losing him for basically nothing next season – getting one more year out of him. It will be important how that plays out with Purdy. And now it could be a consideration for the 49ers to try and get something done for Ayuk. If things are going as um, stale and as negative, I guess. I don't want to say negative because John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan have been pretty adamant about it. Ayuk hasn't really said it's been bad. But he hasn't said it's good either. So right now they're in a weird area, gray area, where nothing's really getting done. They're just talking, reportedly, according to Shanahan and John Lynch. You have to really start thinking and considering your options with Ayuk. Right now, selling him high when his market value is at an all-time high just based on the season, like I mentioned that he had. And the sort of situations you're going to be in next season with Brock Purdy, I don't know any of the other contracts that they might have due, but they're already over the cap, and regardless, they're going to have some free agents. I'm sure they're going to have some significant player on the last year of their deal or trying to restructure something. You don't want to add on Brandon Ayuk and trying to add him or re-sign him and potentially losing him for nothing. So right now, I think it's sort of trending in a way where the 49ers will stay on their Um, stance and say yeah we're gonna negotiate with them it's going well it's not going bad so we're just gonna keep talking they're gonna go with that until really I think that it's getting closer to the draft and we're gonna maybe see a situation like AJ Brown a few years ago with the Philadelphia Eagles you know he wanted a contract extension they couldn't agree on anything and the Titans really just decided hey, we're not going to lose this all-world receiver for free. Let's trade him during the NFL draft to the Eagles. I think, I'm pretty sure they got a second-round pick out of it and maybe something else. So if that's the get-back compared to getting nothing for him, I think the 49ers are starting to trend that way. And it might be the ultimate solution to try and keep most of their players that they have on this roster. Like I mentioned, I don't know how many or how significant the players they will have next offseason be free agents, but you'd rather have more money to distribute to a lot of more to a lot players than paying Ayuk right now something that you might not be comfortable with, then having to pay Brock Purdy next offseason, then you're really in a cap deficit and you don't have money to pay the rest of the players that you might have as free agents or trying to get contract extensions as well. And on that note, you know, the more the longer this waits out, you have to think. I mentioned other wide receivers that need extensions, Justin Jefferson, CD Lamb. Most people will have them above Brandon Ayuk in terms of wide receiver rankings, hierarchy in the league. If they wait any longer, I don't know how much longer before Justin Jefferson gets a new deal or CD Lamb gets a new deal, but they're very high quality players. The Cowboys and Vikings will want to get deals done with them. The longer the 49ers put this off and say they don't agree on a contract with Ayuk until after Justin Jefferson gets a new contract, CeeDee Lamb gets a new contract, 
This is only going to raise the price even more by resetting the market, which Justin Jefferson has said he wants to do. Pushing that average salary per year past $30 million, it's only going to raise the price for Brandon Ayuk even more, so they have to consider that. And the last thing I'll say is Mike Garofolo, again, reported on Friday, this past Friday, that both sides aren't really close to a new deal. You want to talk about circumstances of that? You know, will Brandon Ayuk sit out? Will he play on the low wages that I mentioned before? I don't think he'll sit out because if he sits out, the daily fine for missing training camp and preseason games is 40000 for training camp and 784000 a game check for a preseason games. So, you know, it's too expensive to sit out if you're Brandon Ayuk at this point. I think the best situation for Brandon Ayuk and the 49ers is trending in that we're going to see something become more, gain more traction as we head into the NFL draft. The 49ers could have a good chance right now of cashing in on Brandon Ayuk at the draft for someone picking late or, you know, someone past the 20s in the mid round to try and get something for him. I would say second round, but. You know, if you could get something in the first day and get a first round pick or um, not have to rush on that second day to get a second round pick at least for him, I think it would work out better in the end for both parties if it went out that way. And, you know, the 49ers have already lost Eric Armstead. Could this be one of the last years you see this core group of guys, the Ayukes, the McCaffreys, the Debos, Bosa? George Kittle, really all together. Once if once and if they lose Ayuk, it could start to trend a bit more negative just because, like I mentioned, that salary cap situation they find themselves in. Brock Purdy getting a lot of money. How much more would that push them into a deficit? I don't want to predict it now, but it's something to watch going forward. You know, Could this be one of the last years we see the 49ers with that same core group of guys that they've been able to hold on to for so long, be successful for so long, but much like the Buffalo Bills, those great teams have a window. I'm not saying it's closed. I'm not saying by any means it's closed or it's close to being closed, but it's just something to look at. You you know, thinking about it, how this money thing plays out, potentially losing IU, trying to be lucky enough to replace him. It's a lot harder than it seems for these teams, so it's something to watch something to keep an eye on. It's definitely, something's going to happen at the NFL draft. I'm already predicting that, that if this doesn't get any better, the NFL draft is where usually some of the biggest deals happen, and I wouldn't be surprised if Ayuk is traded in the first day of the NFL draft. So watch that. Make sure, maybe you'll be drafted to one of your favorite teams out there. Who knows? Um, but yeah, something interesting to monitor going now into the month of April. It's draft month, so things are just going to ramp up from here. It's talking about this show, ramping up this show. We're going to send it into the second break of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. A lot more to get into on today's episode. I'm going to bring you my power rankings for each conference after the break. A lot of surprises in there, a lot of expected rankings. Find out how I've ranked the AFC Conference and the NFC Conference. Coming up after this break, you're watching the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 